Chest tube can look intimidating, but they don't have to be. Whether you're a nursing student, a nurse, or prepping for the NCLEX, understanding chest tubes is crucial. What's normal? What's an emergency? What do you do if a chest tube gets pulled out? And what does continuous bubbling actually mean? By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to manage chest tubes like a pro and master your exams on chest tube topics as I will throw in some NCLEX tips at the end of this lecture. Let me break it all down in a way that actually makes sense for you. Let's start with the basics. What is a chest tube? A chest tube is a flexible catheter inserted into the pleural space to remove air, blood, or fluid so the lung can fully expand. Think of it as a drain for the lungs. Why do we use it? Here are the five most common conditions that require chest tubes. Number one, pneumothorax. Pneumo means air or lungs. Thorax refers to the chest cavity. So pneumothorax literally means air trapped in the chest cavity, causing the lung to collapse. Think of a popped balloon. When air leaks into the pleural space, it pushes against the lung, making it collapse, just like a balloon losing air. So pneumothorax is when air leaks into the pleural space, causing the lung to collapse. This can happen from trauma, spontaneous rupture, or even procedures like central line placement. Number two, hemothorax. Hemo means blood. Thorax still refers to the chest cavity. So hemothorax means blood pooling inside the chest cavity, AKA the pleural space, often from trauma, surgery, or lung infections. Number three, pleural effusion. Pleural refers to the pleural space, the area around the lungs. Effusion means fluid buildup. So a pleural effusion is simply fluid collecting around the lungs, making it harder to breathe. Think of a flooded basement. Just like too much water in a basement, excess fluid around the lungs prevents them from expanding properly. So pleural effusion is the excess fluid around the lungs, which can be caused by infection, cancer, heart failure, or liver disease. Number four, empyema. Empi sounds like pus. And that's exactly what it is. So, empyema is when pus collects in the pleural space, usually due to an infection like pneumonia. Think of empyema equals pus prison. The infection gets trapped inside the pleural space, and a chest tube is needed to drain it out. Finally, post-operative drainage. After thoracic surgeries like lung resection, heart surgery, or trauma surgery, chest tubes are placed to prevent fluid buildup. Chest tubes remove extra fluid from the pleural space after surgery. This can prevent complications like cardiac tamponade, which is the cardiac emergency due to pressure on your heart from too much blood and fluid in the sac around your heart. Now that we know why chest tubes are used, let's break down how they actually work. There are two main types of drainage systems used with chest tubes, wet suction and dry suction. Nurses should understand how both work. Wet suction uses sterile water to create suction pressure. It requires regular monitoring and water level adjustments. Dry suction uses a self-regulating dial to adjust suction. In this case, no water is needed, so it's easier to maintain. Now, let's break down the three main chambers of a chest tube drainage system. Collection chamber. This is where drainage collects. Nurses should monitor the amount, color, and consistency. Water seal chamber. This acts as a one-way valve, preventing air from flowing back into the pleural space. Suction control chamber. If suction is ordered, this helps pull air or fluid out of the pleural space to allow lung expansion. So how do you know if a chest tube is working correctly? Let's break down what's normal and what's not. This is where a lot of people get confused. Let's break it down simply. First, what are expected findings? Gentle bubbling in the suction control chamber. If the patient is on wet suction, you should see gentle bubbling in the suction control chamber. This means the system is working properly, but watch out. If bubbling is too strong or continuous, it could mean there's an air leak. Titling in the water seal chamber. Titling means the water level rises when the patient breathes in and falls when they breathe out. This is a good sign because it means the chest tube is still helping remove air or fluid. If titling stops suddenly, check the tubing for a kink or clot. It could also mean the lung has fully expanded. Gradual decrease in drainage output. The amount of fluid coming out should decrease over time. Drainage should look pink or light red at first, then turn clear or yellowish. Then, what are not expected findings? These are high yield topics in the exams. Continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. 
If bubbling never stops in the water seal chamber, it means there's an air leak. What should you do? Start at the patient's chest and check every connection in the tubing. Make sure the chest dressing is sealed tightly. If you can't find the leak, call the provider. No titling in the water seal chamber. If titling stops suddenly, it could mean the lung has re-expanded, which is good. The tube is clogged or kinked, which is bad. What should you do? Check the tubing for bends, kinks, or clots. Listen to the patient's lung sounds. If they're clear and the patient is breathing well, the lung may be healed. If the patient is struggling to breathe or drainage has stopped, call for help. Sudden increase in drainage output. If the patient suddenly starts draining more than 100 to 150 milliliters per hour, something is wrong. Bright red fresh blood means there might be active bleeding. What should you do? Stay with the patient and check their vital signs. Call the provider immediately. No drainage at all. If the chest tube was draining before but suddenly stops, it could mean the tube is clogged with a clot. The patient is lying on the tubing and blocking it. What should you do? First, reposition the patient. Check for kinks or clots in the tubing. If nothing works, call the provider to assess the tube. Subcutaneous emphysema, air under the skin. This happens when air leaks from the chest tube into the skin. You'll feel a crackling sensation, like popping bubble wrap when you touch the skin. What should you do? Mark the area to see if it spreads. If it moves up to the face, neck, or chest, call the provider ASAP. It could mean a worsening air leak. Signs of a tension pneumothorax, the life-threatening emergency. Tension pneumothorax happens when air gets trapped in the chest and keeps building up, crushing the lung and shifting the heart. The biggest warning sign? Tracheal deviation, the trachea, windpipe, shifts away from the affected side. Other signs include severe shortness of breath, low oxygen levels, low blood pressure, and chest pain. This is an emergency. You should call a rapid response and prepare for the doctor to insert another chest tube or needle decompression. Okay, so what are your nursing priorities while managing patients with chest tubes? Your main goals are to keep the system functioning, prevent complications, and monitor your patient closely. Make sure you keep the chest tube drainage system below chest level at all times. Check respiratory status, lung sounds, and oxygen saturation regularly. Encourage deep breathing, coughing, and incentive spirometry to prevent pneumonia. Document drainage amount and characteristics every shift. And you should call the provider when there is sudden increase in drainage over 100 to 150 milliliters per hour. New onset subcutaneous emphysema, which feels like air trapped under the skin. Signs of tension pneumothorax, such as tracheal deviation, severe distress, or dropping oxygen levels. Now, let's talk about what to do in an emergency. Let's run through some worst case scenarios. These will show up on NCLEX. What if the chest tube gets disconnected? Do not clamp the tube. Instead, place the open end into sterile water to create a temporary water seal and prevent air from entering. What if the chest tube gets pulled out? Do not push it back in. Immediately apply a sterile occlusive dressing. Tape it on three sides to allow air to escape, preventing a tension pneumothorax. All right, time to test your knowledge with the NCLEX questions. A patient's chest tube has stopped draining and there is no titling in the water seal chamber. What should the nurse do first? A, call the doctor. B, increase suction pressure. C, check tubing for kinks or clots. D, remove the chest tube. The correct answer is C. No titling usually means the tube is blocked or the lung has fully re-expanded. Quick NCLEX. Tip here, never clamp the chest tube unless ordered, as it increases the risk of tension pneumothorax. Continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber means an air leak. Check all connections. Now that you know how to assess chest tubes like a pro, don't stop here. Understanding normal versus abnormal findings is a key NCLEX topic, and I've put together a comprehensive NCLEX study guide with all the must-know nursing concepts including detailed chest tube notes, mnemonics, and practice questions. If you want to save time studying and feel more confident on exam day, grab my full NCLEX notes at yournursingspace.com.
These notes are designed to make tricky nursing topics easy to understand and remember. And if you want to practice OnClex questions in the real exam-like interface, check out our test bank platform on yournursingspace.com. Our advanced adaptive testing platform featuring over 5,000 peer-reviewed questions is designed to mirror the NCLEX questions. It includes detailed rationales, daily content updates, and 24-7 AI tutor. Everything you need for passing the NCLEX is available on your nursing space. And before you go, let me know in the comments, what's the scariest chest tube situation you've seen in clinicals? Let's help each other learn. Hit like and subscribe for more high-yield nursing content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.